Good evening everyone, Brewmaster here, and if you can't tell, I'm a little under the weather. Um, I've had a sore throat for a few days, um, somewhat losing my voice, I've been coughing a lot. Uh, it's not a good thing, but I waited a couple of days trying to let this pass, and it didn't, so I decided it was time to get a review in. Um, you know, I'd waited, and I'm not waiting anymore. For this review, it is going to be episode 3 of my history of German brewing and beer. I'm sorry, episode 4. I told you, I haven't been feeling well. But anyway, for this one it is Weinsteiner Hefeweiss beer. I don't know if it is completely true, but I believe it is the world's oldest still standing brewery um, since 1040. It's a very, very old. Uh, premium Bavaricum, the world's oldest brewery, um, brewed under the purity law of 1516, which is the Reinheitsgebot. It comes in at 5.4% ABV. Um, it says store dark and keep cool, 46 to 52 degrees. Okay, let's see. On let's see here. On Beer Advocate, it gets a 98 score, which is world class, and the Bros give it a hundred. And on Rate Beer, it gets a 99 overall and a 100 for style. So this should definitely be a treat if you follow the rating systems these guys offer at all. Um, it is brewed in uh, Bayerisch, Bayerisch Staatsbrewerei Weinheinstefen. Hope I didn't butcher that too terribly. Like I said, I have not been feeling super well, but it was just time to get a review in. And now for a little bit of the history that I've been throwing into each of these episodes. Um, let's see here. Romans in what is present day Germany even learned to brew themselves as is evident from a com complete Roman brewery discovered in 1983 near the Bavarian city of Regensburg on the banks of the Danube. This brewery dates from the second or third century AD and was part of, let's see, and was part of Canaba, a settlement of craftsmen that had sprung up within the walls of a fortification called Castra Regina, hence the modern day, day name of the city, Regensburg. Castra Regina was built in 179 AD by the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Because of the strategic location along the northeastern flank of the empire, it became the largest Roman camp in what is now southern Germany housing some 6,000 obviously thirsty legionnaires as well as scores of administrators and support personnel. It is apparent from the construction of the kiln and mash tun of the Regensburg brewery that German beer making had by that time progressed from the primitive bread beer. Pretty interesting stuff. I've had a lot of fun um, learning about German brewing history um, like I've stated in previous videos, it's a very rich history over a thousand years. Everybody seems to think that uh, they, they think of the clean, crisp lagers that you see today, which have only honestly been popular for about the last 150 years, um, the dark lagers for about 500 years, and then before that, it was all ale. Germans are known primarily for ale. It is just in modern day time that this changed. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get a pour on this and see what it looks like. I'm try to be easy on this cat because I only have one and it's a really pretty cat. Yeah, bent it a little bit, but I don't know if you can see that clearly, but it's really pretty. Alright, let's get a pour and see what she looks like. Now, half of Weiss beers are unfiltered bottle conditioned beers. Or bottle fermented, whichever way you want to say, second for secondary fermentation, sort of. So they do have a lot of sediment in the bottom. Um, I was just actually watching a video from Ron Th Ronald Thyra. I, I hope I said that correctly. He is a, a fellow um, YouTube beer reviewer, and there was something he said that I, that I found very interesting about a lot of people would uh, skulk away from the um, chunks that are in the bottom of an unfiltered and bottle conditioned beer and I have seen the same thing I wanted to just go ahead and agree with him on that a lot of people will 
um, turn their head at that and not drink it because of it. Um, I think it only really honestly adds a little bit of flavor to a good beer. So I always put it in there, unless it's got like just an exorbitant amount. Sometimes you get a beer and you'll get a layer on the bottom that is just huge, and I don't want all that in there. So I might not do that. But as you can see, guys, this pours a very hazy golden color. I'll let you see. You can see the top portion is quite a bit more hazy where I poured in the sediment. And you can see there's some chunks floating around in there. Not too big, but there are some in there. Nice hazy golden, nice two, two and a half finger, very white, creamy head. Um, it looks like there's some little sprinkles on top from the sediment in the bottom of this, sort of like a cappuccino or something. Let's go ahead and get a nose and see what this one smells like. Huh, very, very spicy. Um, like a, almost like a Belgian yeast characteristic, but it's Hefeweizen, of course, but it's a very, very spicy slightly tart um, you can smell the grassy um, like the the gra cut grass fresh cut grass sort of a smell some hay um, sometimes half a wisin smells sweet but this one does not really smell sweet at all it smells more tart nice uh, yeasty phenols in there let's go ahead and get a taste of this one see what it tastes like I know it's right off very, very smooth. Washes down very cleanly. Um, nice medium mouthfeel. Slightly herbal hot presence, but just ever so slight. Um, that nice, clean, crisp wheat. A little bit of that uh, fresh cut grass, sort of an earthy taste kind of comes through, translates through I guess you should say, it doesn't. I've never tasted cut grass but that's what it tastes like fresh, like what you would imagine chewing on a, a, a piece of straw or a piece of hay, very fresh very grassy it's a very clean beer, lots of carbonation, a little bubble streaming up um Quite, quite a thick head. Nice. Let me see I'll get, if I can get you another look. Nice, really golden color. It's all in all very, very smooth. Um, I can't say it's my favorite Hefeweizen, but it is very good. It, it, the, the ratings are well warranted. It's, a, it's very tasty, very, very smooth. Um, there's definitely nothing bad about it at all. Um, I would have to go ahead and rate this one. I don't think I can go as high as, as what they go. I mean, for style, I would definitely give it a 95. It is right on for style. Um, but I like them, I think, when they have a little more... A little more of that yeasty funk that Hefeweizens can sometimes get. This one doesn't have a whole lot of that. Um, it's fairly neutral in that regard. It's a very smooth, very tasty, very easily drinkable, sessionable beer. I think I would have to rate this one at about... A 90, 91, somewhere right in there. Very good, very smooth. Um, the grassy, fresh taste is very pleasant. A nice, tiny amount of uh, of herbal hop bitterness. Maybe some um, uh, something like I don't know. Maybe a, a fuggles. Maybe something like that. This is uh, it's good. It's good. It's not as much as uh, it's not as good as I don't think they rate it. Not because I don't think it's a great beer, just because to get a 99 or 100 from me, you got to be really outstanding. And just for my own personal taste, this one doesn't hit it as well as some. Um, it's very good, well worth buying. It wasn't too awfully expensive. It's more than it's, it was more expensive than some for sure. Um, but all in all, I think well worth it. It's a good beer, and um, I would recommend it. Now, guys, hopefully I start feeling better soon. I can get some more reviews out there. I apologize if this one was not up to my normal um, quality of video. I really don't feel very good. I just I wanted to get one out there. I didn't want to keep <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to get one out there. I didn't want to keep you guys waiting. So I went ahead and did it. You guys have a great night. Um, 
if there's any kind of German beers that you wanted to uh, see me put in as an episode as part of this series, please go ahead and list them in the comments box below. I'll try my best to get them because I'm going to do as many German beers as I can as part of this, this series. As I said, this was only episode four and I've got uh, quite a few more to come. Leave your comments in the box below, hit that like button, and please do not forget to subscribe. I've been Brewmaster, and cheers, you guys.